All right, so I am working on the chest assembly and the head assembly, and I have these other like crazy references that I think are gonna be pretty helpful, especially because I have this long waist, right? And birds don't usually have this long waist. So I am <coughs> going to bring in this strange water buffalo creature. I just love these textures and all this stuff kind of hanging. But I'm actually going to grab it inside its actual structure. So as long as I keep in mind where the spine is, because it's not at the right orientation, mostly I'm just wanting all this extra stuff, all this stuff hanging off. And who knows, I might use those horns on part of the tail or something. So I grab a little bit more than I need. Duplicate it, just delete the smart layer. Immediately transform the new layer. And I'm thinking of this as that back edge, right? And this kind of showing the rib cage a little bit. So now that I've got these components, I'm gonna start welding things to the chassis. And I want this element, this water buffalo, as weird as it is, to be the foundation component. So I'm going to take its opacity down a little bit, maybe to about 75, just so I can barely see my sketch. And then I'm going to warp it and push that spine where I want it to be for my sketch. It's like rolling dough. But I also need the hair to fall with gravity. But remember, I'm using a lot of overlap. Then I gotta push the back, there we go, to be on the hip. And then like I said, the head and horns, maybe I'll use for the tail or something later. But right now, I'm worried about the chest area. Now, why do I like this fur? I like textures that help transition between areas. Even a dog that's just all one color, it has thicker fur in different places that help transition from its chest to its legs, its belly to its back, right? Okay, now if I put that, it's, it's black, it's ominous looking. It looks kind of scary, like it's a, a robe. I even like how that can be the tail. So now let me rough erase from it. Get this head out of there. Okay, so if I take that as my, my basis, and it's, it's pretty neutrally colored. I'm not even going to try to erase away from it yet. Now I'm going to bring these different components on top of it. So I've got the um, the waist. <laughs> I'm going to label that layer. I've got the chest, and I've got what's called a back plate with those spines. All of those are going to select them all. Well, just the chest and the back plate, I'm going to select them all, put them in their own group. Call it the chest. And then I can take that and move it down. Take its opacity down to about 80. Well, 60. <laughs> Transform it. Shrink it into place. knowing that that's the rib cage of my sketch right there. Put it back at 100%. So we're kind of welding them all together now. Obviously there's transitions that have to be done and I'll decide how much of that fur, that black fur I want to keep, but I've extended it now. So I've got a chest and hips. Then I'm going to take that head and neck group, I'm going to move it on top of the chest, 
because it's closer to the viewer. Whoops. Whoops. Accidentally moved it into the chest. Command Z is a wonderful thing with Photoshop. And move it on top. Come on. I can also use Command right bracket to move it up. And then transform it. Shrink it. Angle it. I can take the opacity down. Line it up with my sketch. That's going to keep me true to the anatomy. Right? And then make it 100%. Okay, now, now is the time before I start adding wings and other elements behind that I need to start seaming these elements together. So now I need to get rid of this background. So I go to my foundation level of the, the head and I'm going to use whatever means I think is best. I'm going to start with the magic wand at 32 to erase this background. I'm going to turn contiguous on. Hmm. And I'm holding down shift to add to it. Looking so far so good. Even back here. And this I'm not too worried about. That has to be blended in anyway. All right, let's delete. All right, let's turn off my sketch really quick. So it's just on gray. It's looking pretty believable. I have a little bit down here I need to get rid of. Oh, nope, that's from another layer. Okay, good. Okay, now I do what we did with our landscape. I take a soft eraser at 100% opacity. And I get rid of that hard edge transition of the anatomy. Just the hard edges. Okay, now I can take it to a lower opacity and start transitioning it in. So I want those spines to feel like they're coming from these scales. A little bit and then there's extra feathers and fur around okay now I am going to adjust the colors with hue saturation This allows me to darken it, brighten it. I'm going to darken it a little bit. You can also do that by limiting the highlights. But I have to remember whatever I do is also going to affect the snout. So I don't want to make it too extreme. And then I can go to the back plate and start transitioning this as well the soft-edged eraser. Yeah, it's helping. And then the chest itself. I can get rid of those hard edges. Start to let some of that fur come through. So blending fur with feathers, with scales, with quills, it's very similar to blending your different landscape layers together. You have to get rid of hard edges, and then you have to work on kind of soft transitions.
Okay, now this big white spot on the chest, that's not going to work. So before I erase it out completely, I'm going to burn it down. And for this, I might need to burn the highlights. Because there might be aspects of these patterns and things that I, I want to use. But they're going to be in the shadows of the wings anyway. So first I burn it down. I can also do that with the back plate. It's a little too bright here. It's just different lighting. And then there's also levels that I can use. I can intensify the shadows a little bit, darken the midtones so they start to blend a little bit better. So now all that's looking more in shadow. And then I use my eraser. Oh, not at 100% anymore. The lower opacity because I've gotten rid of the hard edge. And I start blending it in a little. So you have feathers and fur all working together. It's very helpful to have a tablet and stylus for this so you can be more targeted and pressure sensitive. There we go. So that helps kind of round all of that out, bring it together. I take a little bit more from the scales a little bit less. Remember, the wings are going to come from that joint. Like so. And now it looks like I have this kind of wet beaver thing that I need to put wings on and a tail and some legs poking out of that fur. But there are some weak areas. That's a weak area right there. I'm hoping the wing will help with that. At this point, I can save it. I cleaned up the head, right? And I've cleaned up the back, but I haven't cleaned up around this, this pelt yet because a lot of it's gonna get covered up by wings still. All right, speaking of wings, I've saved it. It's a good thing to save. I don't think I'll bring the hornet's nest in. <laughs> it's good to have those backups if you need them. Now I go to the to the wing reference. And I think I want something kind of darker, not lighter. Though these wings are per almost perfectly aligned, so it, it seemed dumb not to even just try it. So let's just take it just like that. So even though the wings aren't the right color, they're definitely the right shape the right angle. Gosh, even the feet might be usable, though they're not the most dramatic feet. So I'm going to take that big chunk, save it. For winged creatures, the wings have to be big enough to support the weight of the creature. And you have to have a big enough breastbone to support the muscles that are needed to flap that. Okay, I'm going to Take it down to about 50%, transform it, and start attaching it, those wings. See if I can get that, that joint to work <coughs> the way I had in mind. Tilt it a little bit. It's all about where the joint is. So don't be afraid of making, if you do wings, don't be afraid of making them big. Okay, let's put that at 100% and let's move it behind the chest and behind the waist. Okay, let's get rid of this, this extra head that we don't need. Turn off the sketch for the moment. And let's just, because it looks pretty easy to select out, let's use contiguous magic wand to get rid of all the green background. It's less in focus. What was really nice about this flying bird reference 